Good evening from the International Space Station Flight Control Room at the Johnson Space Center in Houston. We're back uh, with our coverage of the departure of, from the International Space Station of three of its residents as Gennady Padalka, Sergey Revin, and NASA's Joe Acaba prepare to depart the international outpost that has been their home for the past 123 days since their arrival back on May 17th. This uh, departure by the offgoing Expedition 32 crew members uh, will leave on board the International Space Station the new Expedition 33 commander, NASA's Sonny Williams, joined by Russian cosmonaut Yuri Malenchenko, as well as uh, Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency flight engineer Aki Hoshide, who will tend uh, to the International Space Station for about a month or so until the arrival of three new residents to the International Space Station in October. At this hour, countdown clocks here in the Mission Control Center are ticking backward to the undocking of the Soyuz TMA-04M vehicle. Less than 23 minutes from now, it will depart uh, the Poisk module, the space-facing uh, docking port uh, that is mated to the Zvezda service module. The TMA-04M uh, was the ride up to orbit for Gennady Padalka, Sergey Revin, and Joe Acaba as they launched from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan back on May 15th. With this uh, departure today and their landing uh, on the steppe of Kazakhstan just over four hours from now, Padalka, Revan, and Akaba will finish 125 days in space. For Gennady Padalka, it will mark the end of his fourth flight into space and a total of 711 days on orbit. For Padalka, that makes him number four on the all-time list of the most traveled uh, humans in space behind Sergei Krikalov, Alexander Kaleri, and Sergei Avdeyev. Sergei Revin wrapping up his first flight into space, and for Joe Acaba, wrapping up his second flight into space, uh, preceded uh, by a 13-day mission aboard the shuttle Discovery on the STS-119 mission in March of 2009, and a total of 138 days in space aggregate total. About five hours ago, uh, in the passageway between the Poisk module and uh, the Soyuz uh, hatchway, the departing crew members, uh, Sergei Revin, uh, Joe Acaba there, now hugging Sonny Williams and Gennady Padalka, soon to float into the field of view. Uh, they said their final farewells to one another. Williams, uh, Hoshide, and Malenchenko, of course, uh, remaining behind. Uh, as the tending crew to the new Expedition 33 increment that formally will begin with the undocking of the Soyuz vehicle just 20 minutes from now. They said uh, goodbye to one another for the final time. Uh, the uh, crew made its way into the Soyuz spacecraft to begin configuring switches and systems. Uh, the hatch uh, was finally closed uh, to the Soyuz vehicle at 3.12 p.m. Central Time, 4.12 p.m. Eastern Time. A few minutes later, the Soyuz was placed on autonomous power, and a series of leak checks began uh, to ensure a tight seal at the docking interface between the Soyuz and the Poisk module, and on the station side between the Poisk and the Zvezda service module, leading to the depressurization of the small passageway or vestibule uh, that uh, is the uh, juncture between the Soyuz and the International Space Station. At uh, 4.51 p.m. Central Time today, uh, about an hour ago, uh, the hooks uh, at the docking interface uh, between the Poisk and the Soyuz spacecraft were driven open. Uh, the crew uh, had climbed into their Sokol launch and entry suits prior to that. They conducted uh, a series of leak checks uh, to make sure that they had a, a tight seal on their suits. Uh, to uh, prevent any uh, problems at the time of undocking. 
And a short time ago, the International Space Station was maneuvered into the undocking orientation uh, to set the stage uh, for the opening of the hatch, uh, the opening of the hooks for the Soyuz side of the docking interface that will take place at 6.06 .06 p.m. Central Time, just three minutes before physical separation occurs, enabling uh, springs on either side of the docking interface to push off against one another and allowing the Soyuz to back away from the International Space Station at a rate of about one-tenth of a meter per second. The uh, Soyuz commander, Gennady Padalka, seated in the center seat of the descent module, the middle section of the three-section Soyuz spacecraft, uh, flanked on his left by Sergei Revin, the board engineer, on a, and on his right by Joe Acaba, who was the flight engineer for today's entry and landing. Uh, the uh, Soyuz commander, Padalka, uh, flying under the call sign of Altair, uh, will conduct a separation burn, a 15-second burn of the Soyuz engines at 6.12 p.m. Central Time to initiate an opening rate between the Soyuz and the International Space Station that eventually will enable the Soyuz to back away to a distance of about 12 kilometers from the International Space Station for the deorbit burn. Uh, the updated time for the deorbit burn, according to the latest information from the Russian flight control team, is 8.56 and 18 seconds p.m. Central Time. This will be a four-minute, 16-second retrograde maneuver, a firing of the Soyuz engines to slow the vehicle down by 115.2 meters per second, enabling the Soyuz to drop out of orbit for its 53-minute uh, entry back into the Earth's atmosphere. The three sections of the Soyuz will separate at 9.25 and 29 seconds p.m. Central Time, uh, enabling uh, the Soyuz to reach the first uh, traces of the Earth's atmosphere, traveling uh, at about 400,000 feet shortly thereafter. The command will be opened uh, to uh, deploy the parachutes, first a drogue chute followed by a main chute. The chute uh, deployment uh, will occur at 9.38 and 5 seconds p.m. Central Time, and that will enable the Soyuz uh, to fire its braking rockets at soft landing engines a split second before touchdown, which is now recalculated at 9.52 and 35 seconds p.m. Central Time, 10.52.35 Eastern Time, enabling the Soyuz to settle down uh, to the steppe of Kazakhstan for its landing. Uh, just north of the, the remote town of Arkalik. Uh, and uh, Kazakhstan, uh, the NASA uh, landing team uh, that uh, flew a few days ago uh, to Kazakhstan, led by Mike Serber, who is the Director of Human Spaceflight Operations in Russia, joined by the Deputy uh, Program Manager for the International Space Station, Kirk Shireman, uh, the Chief Astronaut, Bob Bankin, uh, the former Chief Astronaut, Peggy Whitson, a team of NASA flight surgeons, NASA Public Affairs Officer, Josh Byerly, and NASA Headquarters Photographer, Carla Chofi, uh, a total of 12 Russian Mi-8 helicopters are in play uh, to support uh, tonight's landing. Six of those helicopters deployed uh, very, very early today in the wee hours uh, Sunday morning U.S. time to the town of Arkalik, about a two-hour helicopter flight from the staging city uh, to the north, uh, just across the Russian border uh, in Kustanai, Kazakhstan. The other six Russian Mi-8 helicopters will deploy uh, at uh, two hours uh, before landing, or just about 8 p.m. Central Time tonight. They will fly uh, to the landing site to join up uh, with the other helicopters that will be deployed at the time of the deorbit burn. All 12, uh, or eight of those 12 helicopters will be in a racetrack pattern around the prime landing site to await the arrival of the Soyuz under its main parachute. Two other helicopters will be hovering at the midway point between the ballistic landing site to the southwest of the prime landing site in the unlikely event the Soyuz would encounter a problem that would result in it landing short of its intended target. And two other uh, Russian Mi-8 helicopters uh, will be deployed right over the ballistic landing site for an expedited recovery of the crew in the event they land short of their intended target. These 12 Russian Mi-8 helicopters will be joined by three fixed-wing Antonov aircraft, one of which will serve as a flying command center to relay uh, communications uh, between the Soyuz spacecraft and Russian flight controllers at the Russian Mission Control Center in Karyov outside Moscow. A half a dozen all-terrain vehicles are also in place, uh, both at the prime landing site and the ballistic landing site, in the event they're required uh, for uh, recovery 
assistance as well. Once uh, the Soyuz touches down, uh, hopefully at the prime landing site on target as uh, the Russian uh, Soyuz spacecrafts typically do, a, uh, the team of uh, search and recovery forces uh, called Ros uh, Aviatsa, uh, the search and recovery uh, forces uh, will tend uh, to the spacecraft. Uh, the helicopters will land in sequential fashion. The prime RSC Energia technical personnel uh, will be the first on the scene uh, to begin the process of opening the Soyuz hatch and extracting the crew, while others uh, will uh, erect an inflatable medical tent nearby the Soyuz spacecraft, uh, which uh, the three crew members will be brought into once they've had an opportunity uh, to uh, be placed in reclining chairs to uh, have a few minutes of adaptation back into the uh, gravity of uh, Earth uh, following four months of weightlessness on board the International Space Station. Uh, once inside the medical tent, uh, the three crew members will be helped out of their Russian Sokol launch and entry suits into more comfortable clothing, and then they'll be placed in uh, respective helicopters for the two-hour flight back to Kustanai, Kazakhstan, where the crew members will split up Padalka and Revan to board a Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center aircraft to fly back to Chukalovsky Airfield just outside of their training base at Star City, Russia. Joe Akaba will join uh, his NASA colleagues on the recovery team to board a NASA Gulfstream jet uh, poised uh, at the airport at Kustanai, Kazakhstan, to fly back to Ellington Field here in Houston near the Johnson Space Center. The uh, latest uh, weather forecast uh, just issued by the Spaceflight Meteorology Group here at the Johnson Space Center for the landing site just north of Arkalik calls for just a few clouds at uh, 10,000 feet, scattered clouds at uh, 25,000 uh, feet. Uh, not much in the way of cloudiness. It'll be mostly sunny at the time of landing, which on Monday morning Kazakhstan time at the landing site will be an hour and 43 minutes after sunrise. Winds uh, will be out of the southwest at about six knots, increasing to uh, a southwesterly uh, wind flow of about eight knots, gusting to 12 knots. The temperature at landing time is expected to be in the mid-60s Fahrenheit. It's in the warm sector, if you will, of an approaching cold front and a low pressure system that will move uh, through Kustanai uh, well after the landing. Uh, for the returning trio of expedition crew members aboard the Soyuz TMA-04M. So the stage is set for undocking just 11 minutes from now. Everything is in readiness for that. Uh, the command uh, to drive the hooks open on the Soyuz side of the docking interface, uh, that uh, should be issued about seven minutes from now. And once again, uh, with the uh, Russian uh, MI-8 helicopters and landing team representatives split up, uh, several of them are in the town of Arkalik where they overnighted uh, for one night uh, with the forward placing uh, phalanx of helicopters that will uh, fly to the landing site. It's only about uh, 45 miles or so, about a 20-minute helicopter ride from Arkalik to the landing zone. That's why uh, that uh, a series of helicopters does not take off until the deorbit burn. Uh, they are uh, the first to reach the landing zone and will be circling the landing zone uh, to watch uh, the Soyuz uh, as it descends under its parachute. They'll be the first helicopters on the ground. The other uh, series of helicopters uh, will be deploying from Kustanai first at about two hours uh, before landing or about one hour uh, from now, about two hours from now, and that uh, would put them uh, in concert with the forward placing helicopters and a racetrack pattern around the landing zone at the time of the arrival of the Soyuz spacecraft. So we're about six minutes away from the uh, command uh, to begin uh, the 
opening of the hooks uh, that have held uh, the Soyuz TMA-04M to the Poisk module since May 17th. That will be followed by the physical separation of the vehicles at 6.09 p.m. Central Time, 7.09 p.m. Eastern Time. Yes, but we'll see. Confirmed. Vidus, copy. And we've got the sum and we have the CVS display on. Copy. And the R-17 uh, transmitter uh, is active, copy. Time was 20303, copy. Soyuz Commander Gennady Padalka, who again uh, will be flying under the call sign of Altair all the way through landing, about to depart the International Space Station after being the first three-time commander of the complex. Altair, this is Moscow. He and uh, Akaba and Revan arrived uh, on board just a few days before the historic arrival of the SpaceX Dragon commercial cargo vehicle, a very uh, eventful uh, four-month period for the crew. Padalka and Malenchenko con conducting one spacewalk back uh, in late August. That was followed by two spacewalks out of the U.S. segment of the International Space Station by uh, Sonny Williams and Aki Hoshide to replace a faulty uh, power relay unit. Would you like us to enlarge the display for you? Joe Akaba was the uh, spacewalk choreographer uh, for Williams and Hoshide and uh, was a prime robotic arm operator for all of the critical visiting vehicle operations, including the most recent uh, arrival and uh, departure of the Japanese H-2 transfer vehicle that uh, late last week uh, was sent uh, into a deorbit and a fiery reentry uh, over the Pacific Ocean, uh, loaded with trash, its job having delivered several tons of supplies to the station having been completed. Just uh, over three minutes now until the undocking command will be issued to drive the Soyuz hooks open. The International Space Station currently orbiting 252 miles above Zimbabwe as it moves from southwest to northeast on a trajectory that will carry it up the east coast of Africa and the uh, southern tip of the Saudi Peninsula over the country of Oman. Copy. Uh, do you confirm the T on docking time T, uh, 20600? Moscow, Moscow, do you confirm the T on docking time 20600? Yes, we do confirm the time. Now, two minutes away from the undocking command to begin the driving of hooks. Are you saying stand by or are you saying the T undocking time uh, is the same? Well, we are waiting for the indicator mode and we do not confirm the T undocking for you yet. Yes, we do have indicator mode. Well, we are talking about the station indicator right now. Understand? Uh, did you give us a go to power up? Did not copy. What did you say? Do we have a go to power up SSCP at 020500? You have a go. Copy. Okay, then uh, T undocking. 
Flight controllers at the Russian Mission Control Center in Korolyov. Uh, you're looking at the ISS flight control room from a balcony camera through an interpreter talking to Gennady Padalka, the Soyuz commander, strapped into the center seat of the Soyuz vehicle, flanked on his left by Sergei Revin, on his right, NASA's Joe Akaba. We're waiting for your go. We confirm the T on docking at the planned time. Alta is how copy? Uh, we copied, and the undocking time is 020600. At that time, we'll send the hook open command. We sent the command to open the hooks at 02600. Now the hooks are closed and the LEDs are off. Copy. Copy. And the visiting vehicle officer here in Mission Control confirms that the Soyuz hooks are driving open. The command has been issued. The hooks are driving. This will set the stage for springs on both sides of the docking interface to push off against one another in just uh, two minutes, causing physical separation of Soyuz from the Poisk module for the final time. This view now uh, from a camera on the Soyuz vehicle. You can see the crosshair docking target on the right side uh, of the screen. This also providing uh, informational data for the Russian flight controllers as they will watch uh, the Soyuz back away from the Poisk module. about one minute away from physical separation of the two vehicles. And we confirm that the screen a one is off. The International Space Station flying just south of Nairobi, Kenya. Copy. Skirting up uh, the east coast of Africa. Yes. We see it on the trainer, so now we're going to restart so we can see the SS repair. Copy. Padalka, Revan, and Akaba launched on a warm, sunny morning from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan back on May 15th, arrived at the International Space Station two days later, now about to depart for the final time. Physical separation confirmed. Yes, uh, the SSVP mode has been restarted, so you should see it on the camera. Undocking occurring on time at 6.09 p.m. Central Time over Nairobi, Kenya. So we removed the contrast. Now we can see the, the brightness. Now we can see the target very well. Do you see any... Yeah, the foreign object on the interface of the docking mechanism, we do not see it through the display. We see the target very well and the structural element. Copy.
So are we sending, uh, are we selecting the narrow lens? So we can see the target very well. Gennady, you need to select a narrow lens. Slowly backing away from the Poisk module at a rate of about one tenth we need to of a meter per second. Activate the brightness before we send the command for the special lens. Two minutes from now, there'll be a separation burn of 15 second firing of the Soyuz engines to increase the opening rate. So we have selected the narrow angle lens. Now we can see the picture on the ground. Zero, two, ten, thirty. We can see all the structural elements very well and the target copy. We have selected DPOB copy. Expedition 33 now has officially begun under the command of Sonny Williams, joined by Yuri Malenchenko and Aki Hoshide aboard the International Space Station. They'll be tending uh, to the station as a three-person crew for the better part of a month. Elements are visible, but we do not see the target any longer, so it's difficult for us to judge where it is. Copy. I can see the antenna. Copy. Standing by for the uh, separation burn. This will be a uh, now we can half a meter per second uh, change in velocity. Again, a 15 second burn of the Soyuz engines that will enable the Soyuz to drift away from the International Space Station to an eventual distance of 12 kilometers for the deorbit burn that is scheduled at 8.56 p.m. Central Time. And the separation burn is underway, confirmed by the visiting vehicle officer. Copy. Padalka, Revan, and Akaba bidding farewell to the complex that has been their home for 123 days. Copy. So now we are maneuvering to the larger diameter, so we'll have a better view. Copy. Oh, please continue your comments on the range. Yes, we can still see uh, the station. We are getting a stable uh, photo, or rather video, copy. Uh, we see the large diameter very well. 50 meters, we can see the station very well. Copy. It's following in a 3.5 cells. Copy. We've lost uh, the image, so please continue your commentary. Copy. Three cells on the display still see the structural elements, and that's the ATV, that's what we're seeing. Uh, so a stable view we are receiving, and we're, now we can see the solar rays uh, on the ATV side. Copy. Reports uh, from the crew on their visibility of uh, structures and elements of the International Space Station. The ATV referred to as the Eduardo Amaldi Automated Transfer Vehicle, the European Space Agency's cargo ship that is docked to the aft port of the Zvezda service module and which itself will undock from the station on September 25th to be deorbited uh, and to burn up over the Pacific Ocean. Undocking once again occurring at 6.09 p.m. Central Time over Nairobi, Kenya. Everything uh, going swimmingly for the crew on board the Soyuz TMA-04M as they uh, depart the International Space Station, heading for a deorbit burn a little over uh, two and a half hours from now and a landing on the steppe of Kazakhstan three hours, 38 minutes from now. The updated landing time, 9.52 and 35 seconds p.m., just north of the remote town of Arkalik. 
Russian uh, search and recovery helicopters and the NASA landing recovery team associated with the Russian uh, recovery team members uh, will be deploying in helicopters from the town of Arkalik and uh, from the staging city of Kustanai in the upcoming hours uh, to converge uh, at the landing zone to greet uh, Fadalka, Revan, and Akaba. So we can see the ATV on the two stalls on the display, and then the station moved away. That's it. So we were getting a stable image of the space station. All right, now you can select the wide-angle lens. Maybe you can get a better picture using that. In work. Yes, sir. Confirm R7 command. Copy. And we can see it on VKO as well. So you are not seeing that copy? We are not seeing that. Uh, we are not seeing the station, so either the range is uh, too large or it's just at an angle where it's hard for us to see it. Copy. Yes, uh, that's the end uh, of this page. You have a go for uh, to work on for page 97. These are the closed out operations, and the periscope uh, should be in the orient mode. Copy. Please provide a detailed commentary of all your actions and what you're seeing per page 97. All right. Dynamic mode is inhibited. Copy. Uh, do you give us a go for display G4? We give you a go. So, Vizier periscope orient is uh, switched. The SSVP is off or FF? D8 command is selected and the headlight is off. Copy. We are checking the KDU parameters after dynamic off. Copy. And uh, the ASG mode for the periscope point well? Yes, it has. So visually, we do not see it right now because we're in an orbital uh, night right now, but uh, the flag is off. All stamps on page. Uh, 
Uh, steps for page 97 are complete. Uh, the pressure is 165, 167, uh, propounded 617, and the CADO operation. This is Mission Control Houston uh, continuing to receive uh, reports uh, through the interpreter of our um, Soyuz commander, Gennady Padalka, flanked uh, on his left in the descent module of the Soyuz TMA 04M by Russian cosmonaut uh, Sergei Revin, on his right uh, by NASA flight engineer Joe Acaba as they uh, undocked 11 minutes ago from the International Space Station at 6.09 p.m. Central Time as uh, the station of the Soyuz flew 252 statute miles over Nairobi, Kenya. Just three minutes after undocking, a separation burn of 15 seconds in duration was executed, the firing of the Soyuz engines to initiate a faster opening rate as the Soyuz continues to back away from the International Space Station, eventually to a distance of about 12 kilometers for the deorbit burn that will take place two and a half hours from now at 8.56 p.m. Central Time, enabling the Soyuz to begin the journey out of Earth orbit for a landing site on the steppe of Kazakhstan, just north of the very remote town of Arkalik. In Kazakhstan, uh, the uh, Russian search and recovery forces joined by a NASA landing team involving uh, the participation of uh, Mike Serber, uh, the Director of Human Spaceflight Operations in Russia, Kirk Shireman, the Deputy International Space Station Program Manager, NASA's new Chief Astronaut Bob Bankin, Peggy Whitson, who Bankin replaced and is joining Whitson for this uh, recovery operation tonight. A team of NASA flight surgeons, uh, NASA Public Affairs Officer Josh Byerly, and NASA Headquarters Photographer Carla Chofi, all part of uh, the landing uh, and recovery team, uh, who will be deploying to the landing site uh, four of the uh, helicopters uh, to be deployed from Arkalik to the prime landing site. Four of the helicopters uh, will be flying in about an hour and a half from uh, the staging city of Kustanai uh, in northern Kazakhstan, just across the border from Russia. They will converge at the prime landing site at the time that the Soyuz is descending under its uh, main parachute. Uh, four other helicopters will be deployed uh, over the ballistic landing site to the southwest of the prime landing site where the Soyuz would land in the event it falls short of its intended target due to an unexpected problem. And two of the other helicopters will be midway between the ballistic landing site and the prime landing site. If everything goes as planned, uh, most of the uh, search and recovery uh, forces and uh, the associated uh, landing team members will be uh, flying in a racetrack pattern around the prime landing site at the time of the Soyuz's descent under its chute. And uh, right after the Soyuz lands, the helicopters will begin uh, to land themselves in sequential uh, pattern uh, with the first helicopters involved uh, uh, carrying the RSC Energia engineering personnel who will be first on the scene at the Soyuz spacecraft to begin the process of opening up the hatch to the Soyuz, uh, safing the vehicle, and uh, beginning the process of extracting the crew members one by one into reclining uh, chairs near the spacecraft so that they can begin uh, a, a short uh, period of time of acclimation to a gravity uh, environment for the first time in four months since their launch back on May 15th.
As uh, we continue to get reports back from the Russian uh, flight control team uh, there at the uh, Russian Mission Control Center that you're seeing a view of from a balcony camera overlooking uh, that flight control room in uh, Karyov at the Russian Mission Control Center outside Moscow. It's worth uh, revisiting uh, the weather conditions at the landing site, which are outstanding. It is uh, almost 5.30 in the morning in Kazakhstan. We're about an hour and 40 minutes away from uh, sunrise at the landing site. The uh, Spaceflight Meteorology Group here at the Johnson Space Center a short time ago issued uh, its latest weather forecast for landing. Padalka, Revan, and Akaba will be greeted uh, by just uh, a few clouds at 10,000 feet, scattered clouds at 25,000 feet, mostly sunny conditions. Winds will be out of the southwest at six uh, knots, increasing to eight knots during uh, the course of the recovery operations. A temperature in the mid-60s at landing time. Ideal conditions to greet uh, the three crew members who are coming home after 125 days in space, 123 days aboard the International Space Station. For those uh, who uh, have a propensity uh, for looking at Google Maps, the uh, landing site is pegged at uh, 51 degrees, zero minutes north latitude, 67 degrees, 11 minutes east longitude, which puts it uh, 85 kilometers uh, north of uh, Arkalik at an azimuth of 13.6 degrees. In addition uh, to the 12 Russian Mi-8 helicopters uh, that are part of the uh, Ros Aviatsa landing forces, there are three Antonov fixed-wing airplanes, uh, one of which uh, is the larger of the three that will be in play as a flying command center to relay uh, telemetry and voice communications from the Soyuz crew uh, back to the Russian flight control team uh, in Koryov at the Russian Mission Control Center. Altair, Super Moscow. Altair is Moscow. Go ahead, Moscow. We are reading you loud and clear. We have changed comm configuration. So we are performing a comm check after the comm reconfig copy. We are told uh, by the Russian uh, ballistics folks at the Russian Mission Control Center to expect uh, fairly good communications all the way through uh, the descent of the Soyuz vehicle toward its landing site. Uh, because of the altitude of the International Space Station, uh, the position of the Soyuz antennas relative to the uh, relay antennas uh, through the S-band communication system on uh, the station itself uh, can sometimes be spotty. Uh, particularly during certain regimes of uh, the blackout periods uh, for the Soyuz as it descends uh, through the uh, plasma of entry toward uh, the landing site until it is closer to the landing site, at which time the communications is picked up by that Antonov fixed-wing uh, relay communications plane. Yes, copy. The uh, communications uh, from the Soyuz spacecraft uh, is sometimes a hit and miss proposition, uh, so don't be surprised if we do have periods of uh, no communications where you'll hear the Russian flight control team calling Padalka through the call sign of Altair, and uh, there wouldn't be a response. Uh, that's nothing to be concerned about. That's typical. Uh, we'll uh, continue to relay the information as provided uh, following the deorbit burn through landing.
Юрий Иванович, Нижнему залу СГ-1. Так нас слышно. Юрий Иванович, можно отключать ТВС в радиограмме 0295. Шаг 3. И далее полученные файлы через РСПИ сбросить нам. Подсказать путь, где находится, или вы найдете сами. Спасибо, я найду. Всего хорошо. This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, as the Soyuz TMA-04M spacecraft continues uh, to drift away from the International Space Station following undocking that occurred at 6.09 p.m. Central Time just 24 minutes ago, everything uh, in good shape. The Soyuz is functioning normally. Gennady Padalka in the center seat of the descent module of the three-section Soyuz spacecraft as the Soyuz commander for tonight's uh, entry and landing. On his left, uh, Sergey Revin, the board engineer. On his right, NASA flight engineer, Joe Acaba. They uh, closed uh, the hatch uh, between the Soyuz and the International Space Station at 3.12 p.m. Central Time, conducted a series of leak checks, climbed into their Sokol launch and entry suits, uh, conducted good leak checks on those suits as well. The station maneuvered to the undocking orientation and physical separation, as we mentioned, occurred on time at 6.09 p.m. Central Time. The uh, next uh, major event will be the uh, firing of the Soyuz engines for 4 minutes and 16 seconds at 8.56 and 18 seconds p.m. Central Time. That will be... Uh, a retrograde burn to slow the Soyuz down by 115.2 meters per second, allowing it to drop out of orbit for its descent back into the Earth's atmosphere. At 9.25 and 29 seconds p.m. Central Time, the three sections of the Soyuz will separate pyrotechnically. The forward section, called the uh, orbital module, that contains the avionics and the forward docking probe, and the rear section, that is the instrumentation and propulsion compartment, will separate from the descent module. The three crew members will be on their own, uh, barreling back towards atmospheric entry. Entry interface at an altitude of about 400,000 feet will occur at 9.28 and 40 seconds p.m. Central Time. During entry, uh, the G-forces on the three crew members as they experience their first taste of gravity uh, since, May 7th, uh, since May 15th when they were launched, uh, the uh, atmospheric entry and the entry guidance uh, will begin uh, to build up about four to five Gs on the crew members as they move toward uh, the landing site. They will fly through an orbital sunrise one more time at uh, 9.33 p.m. Central Time before the command is issued to open up their parachutes, first a drogue chute, followed by the main parachute at an altitude of 10.7 kilometers. Uh, the chute command uh, will be given at 9.38 and 5 seconds p.m. Central Time with landing schedule just north of the town of Arkalik on the steppe of Kazakhstan at uh, 9.52 
and 35 seconds p.m. Central Time, 10.52.35 Eastern Time, to bring uh, Expedition 32 to a conclusion. On board the International Space Station, the newly comprised Expedition 33 crew, under the command of Sonny Williams, joined by Aki Hoshide of the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency and veteran Russian cosmonaut Yuri Malenchenko, now a three-person crew for the better part of the next month as they tend uh, to station systems, awaiting the launch of the next three residents of the International Space Station, NASA flight engineer Kevin Ford and Russian cosmonauts Oleg Novitsky and Evgeny Torelkin, scheduled for launch next month from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. So with that, uh, we'll call it a broadcast, and we'll return at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time for deorbit and landing coverage, and what we expect will be live television from the landing site as the Soyuz TMA-04M reenters the Earth's atmosphere for a landing and a conclusion to the four-month or orbital spaceflight for Gennady Padalka, Joe Akaba, and Sergey Revin. We'll see you back in two hours at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, 9.30 Eastern Time with deorbit and landing coverage. For now, this is Mission Control Houston.